Hi, um, future Liz here. At Pat Liz? Mm, Liz here. Um, I am editing this video right now and I just kind of wanted to come on and say that if I look like uninterested or fidgeting and like I'm not listening, I am. I was just having like a really bad anxiety attack that lasted like the whole day. Um, I don't even know if you guys would be able to tell, but I could tell, so I just wanted to preface that. Okay, bye. En enjoy the video. You guys are centered too. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my best friend Natasha. Hello. And we, I wanted to do a video kind of centered around voting in the elections because it's a very important time of year and I like to use my platform as much as I can to speak on things but I'm not always the most eloquent person. So I figured I'd bring my best friend Nat over. And you want to tell them about like, your political history. So I'm a public policy major. First off, I'm a senior in college and I study healthcare mostly. Um, so that's kind of my little area of expertise. If you could call me an expert in anything, it would probably be Taylor Swift actually, but <laughs> we'll continue off of that. Anyways, this past summer I had an internship um, where I worked like for the Michigan Democratic Party which was really cool, and I will be working on the presidential election. So that is kind of my background. I know many things about voting, but I also don't know everything because voting's really complicated because voter suppression is a thing in America. So we will try to answer all of your questions about voting because honestly, it's really complicated and no question is too basic because I didn't learn half these things so literally this last year. I did not really get into politics until the 2016 election, which I think was the case for a lot of people. And honestly, I wish I would have gotten involved sooner. I mean, like, same. Like, I didn't really get into politics yeah. until 2016. I knew, like, nothing besides, like, my family liked Obama. Obama like, has his own problems, let me disclaimer. But we still love him for the most part. We kind of know what it's like to a point, like, going into a very big election and never having really taken an active role in it before. So I kind of figured we'd sit down and make this video because I know a lot of you are... Like, have just turned 18, like, you're trying to get more into politics, and figured we would answer all your questions, so... I had you guys send me stuff, you guys followers sent her stuff, but I'm probably just gonna do it more, like, interview style, just because, <laughs> like I said, Nat can form a proper sentence, and I can't, so... That's debatable, but we'll try. But I'll, obviously, I will chime in. Sure. First question, how early should I get an absentee ballot? This pretty much depends on your state laws, but like pretty much you can, at least in the state of Florida, so I'll speak to this, um, if you go onto like your little voter website, literally just Google like state voting information, like it'll come up. Um, and like on the Florida website, like when I go to like my little page, like I like put in my information, like my first name and like my birthday and all that brings up my voter profile. And there's an option where I can say like, ship me like mail, like my ballots for XYZ elections. I can check box all of them or for most states, if you're a college student, like I am, so I'm not registered to vote in Michigan, which is ironic because I work for the Michigan Democratic Party, but, uh, <laughs> you're involved. <laughs> I sent my vote home to Florida because I live in a really red district. Um, well, it's more purple, but it's pretty red. And so, like, I had to, like, go in, like, mail in a form with my, like, college address in it because they want, like, to make things as hard, difficult as possible. You can't just, like, sign up online if you're sending it to, like, a college address. If you are just a person who doesn't straight up want to go to the polls, which is completely fine and valid, I don't want to go to the polls, um, and your address that you're sending your absentee ballot to is just the one your driver's license, you can easily fill out the form online. Basically, you can do it as early as possible. You do have to request it, like... I think it's at least eight weeks in advance of the election yeah. to like make sure it gets to you in time. It honestly could be even later than that, but I would really just try to do it as early as possible because honestly, you'll forget. Also, if you um, are a college student, I look into a permanent absentee voter list. If <laughs> if your state has that, not all states do. Like Michigan just got it. Um, like literally last year, that's why I spent yeah. my entire summer doing was sign people up for it. And basically this is a way that you would always get the absentee ballot sent to your house for like elections. Like 
and yeah. it's just easy peasy. Yeah. I highly recommend absentee ballot voting, um, even though it has its own issues of being counted. But like, if you can't make it to the polls or for some reason yeah. that day you have an emergency, like it's a nice way that you're safe and then that you can still because like otherwise like you miss your chance. Um, and especially because even if like no. for me in the midterms, I thought that I was going to be out of town and I was going to be able to vote, so I got an absentee ballot an absentee ballot and I ended up being here but I think even if you think that there's like a off like on the off chance you think that you might not be able to vote at the actual polls it's worth getting make just voting absentee also no one wants to wait in those long lines like if you get off work at like 5 p.m. Yeah. so does like the rest of the world and you will be at the polls for like two hours yeah. easily and like for some people, like sure, like to you, maybe it matters a lot that you get to vote so you await those charges, but that's not the case for everyone. People have families, like, and it's just like a really good thing to encourage people to absentee vote. And yeah. Yeah. What is the best way to get informed in the most unbiased way? And this is a question that I got a lot. It's a question I get a lot from my friends. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. Like, I don't have an easy answer. Um, there are, like, several websites, like, New York Times um, just put out one that was, like, which, like, Democratic candidate best fits your thing. It was, like, a 20-person questionnaire. There's a really complicated website that if you literally Google, like, which, like, candidate, like, fits my views, it'll come up. But it's literally the most annoying questionnaire ever. It takes, like, 20 minutes to do some of the questions i don't even understand because there are really complicated things in there but if you're like a person who wants to get into like the real nitty-gritty details like i would take that one but honestly like the best way to like, get informed about a candidate is i would like kind of pick and choose the issues that mean the most to you so like for me like healthcare is a big one um that's like a big issue for me so i would just personally like research each candidate's plan for like their health care like yeah. what their plans are and look up and their voting records and look up their voting records it's a big one but like also like voting records are hard to go off of just because like sometimes like politics do get in the way of how voting works not that that's they're true. not important because they yeah. are and like bernie sanders for example has a really great voting record for like the issues he's yeah. um into but, but if you like listen to him speak <laughs> you're like mm. oh. yeah so i think like picking the issues that matter the most to you and like doing research on that is good honestly like a lot of candidates websites are super detailed um about their plans and if they don't have a plan for that it's not on their website and that's its own sign if they don't have a climate change plan that's a big red ball. Um, so I think like the best way is honestly the most painstaking way is to literally like do your due diligence like research. There's yeah. not like an easy way. And like as for like unbiased, like everything has biases in it. But like you have to just look at the facts, like if they have a plan or not. Yeah. How do I change my address that I'm registered to vote at? Um, so again, this depends on your state law, so like it's kinda hard to answer some of these questions, but usually you have to go either mail in a form or go in person to your office or houses voter registration, which is also like I don't want a building to call it because it's different for every state. Yeah. Um, but like either you have to mail in a form, which usually are just available on the website, and like you just send in like this was like my old address, this is my new address kind of thing. Um, honestly, going in person, like I've done that a lot, it's super fast. I've never had to like wait to do it. Or anything obviously the closer you get to an election though the busier those offices become so I would just really go take care of it like now um and stuff like that so I think that is like the best way is to just go in person also they don't have to worry about like if my phone got lost in the mail going off the mailing in thing like try dropping off your absentee ballot if you can because I know I mailed mine and then I got a thing in the mail being like we haven't received your ballot and I'm like and it's like the day before the election or something else. I send this forever going, you haven't gotten it. They ended up getting it, but if you're able, take things in person. Just so you know that they get it. And um, on that note, I have a question that kind of goes off of that. So we'll okay. do it. So it was, someone said, how do I register to vote in Michigan if I don't have a state issue ID? Um, so like this is my friend who sent this in who's from California. Um, so this can apply to like a lot of people. Um, you don't need a state issued ID to vote like in that state usually um michigan's like a pretty good state about that so like we go to college in michigan 
and if you're like an out of state student you can vote in michigan if that's like where you want your vote to go all you literally have to do is like provide like a pay stub with your name and your like address in michigan on it um like your pay stub like really any kind of like official form of it, like driver's insurance anything like that um you don't have to have a state issued id to vote well you're Which not is supposed very to. important to know because i think that like a lot of people can miss out on voting because they don't know that yeah that's like a big voter suppression tactic is like people at the polls like poll workers will ask for an id you don't have yeah. to have one like you don't i witnessed that during the midterm so i didn't know yeah that you could still vote and i felt bad or like i literally watched this girl like that happened to her and she was in front of me because i went with my best friend sarah and i was like Ugh. and now that i know i'm like yeah. Maybe that worker didn't necessarily know either, but that just goes to show, like what Matt said. Like, know your rights when you go to the polls, for real, because, yeah. like, people will try to trick you, and, like, there should be really no reason for you to be turning away to the polls, like, unless there's something, like, really wrong yeah. with, like, your profile, and you're, or you're just straight up not registered to vote. But, Michigan is a same-day registration state, so if you're, like, not registered to vote, and it comes to election day, you can register to vote then yeah. there and then My dad's vote. Done it, it just will be a long line, so yeah. I don't recommend waiting for that. Also, just want to throw it in there now, vote.org and rockthevote.org make it really easy to look up your state's policies and deadlines, but also obviously look at like your state government sites. Best way to support a candidate other than Yeah, volunteer, honestly. Yeah. Um, that is like huge. Like. Um, in the state of Michigan, there were literally 10,000 votes that, like, could have changed, like, what the state voted for. Because they two people per precinct about, um, like, and being a volunteer can change that. Like, the amount of people I talked to this summer who had, like, never voted before, who, like, voted but didn't vote, like, in the midterms or things like that, like, they like you can make a change like it's i know it's hard to believe like it feels like it's a lost cause yeah. like that like your vote can't make a difference but it really can and like even maybe if you're feel very hopeless about like the presidential election like your local elections matter like they, they really do, do like because that changes so much like what happens in your state yeah like and that can be like sometimes like more important in some aspects than like a federal election yeah and like, like for michigan we just recently got a democratic governor yeah like that's a big deal like you have um like you know it can change the majority of your like state house representatives like which can like change basically like all of your legislation um so like volunteering is big because just knocking on doors like it's annoying i i never answer the door when people knock on my door i'll completely say it but like people do answer the door when you knock and like you can be the person who gets them out to vote and yeah. that can like change a whole thing and like even like this summer i got to meet with representative Alyssa slotkin who um represents michigan and she represents a district that voted for trump but she's a democrat and she was talking about how like when she was knocking doors like people in her town were straight up like oh like i don't want people to know i'm a democrat because they were like scared like that people would find out democrats and she was like that's really funny because like the last three people i just talked to said the same thing she was like you're like surrounded by democrats like and so it's like people like straight will not vote out of like fear that they will be like outed in a way like, in middle school social studies class we're given this form in eighth grade to tell us if we were a republican or a democrat and i was in the class with my best friend and we were the only two people that got democrat everybody else got republican because people were telling their answers and me and my friend like flipped over our papers and at the time we were like oh my god like this is not good because we had no idea we were in eighth grade that's like the point is there is like a peer pressure yeah and like that's like why volunteering matters because like yeah. you can peer pressure people into going to vote big if you have money like volunteer seriously it's like two hours out of your saturday like you're probably not even doing anything i'm usually not doing anything on a saturday so like yeah. you can like go knock doors or like there's other ways like if you're a person who's like i don't want to talk to strangers at the doors you can literally even just go into the office like bring people like food you can help decorate the office like there's all kinds of ways to get involved with the campaign like 
like people just want your help. Like I had to work with volunteers this summer. I was constantly stressed about not having enough volunteers. So there's opportunities if you literally just like put your email or phone number on any candidate's website. Like I get texts from like different candidates all the time being like, will you come knock doors with us? Yeah. And then a follow up question, best way or organization to volunteer through the summer? Straight up the candidate you want to win, like, um, it's really easy to get involved. But like also there are so many organizations that do their own like like way of like helping and supporting. Like for example, I worked a lot with Femmes for Dems this summer and they would like get their whole like group to come out and like knock doors with the yeah. Democratic Party. And I'll link everything like organization stuff down below. Yeah, everything will be in the description. And um, but basically like really like any organization like will any kind of advocacy if you want to like help Planned Parenthood like they're always like doing stuff um, you can even volunteer to go with people to Planned Parenthood yeah there's like literally all kinds of ways like even if you're not necessarily wanting to knock doors but that is the best way you can help but like even if you're just working in an advocacy sense for whatever like cause like means a lot to you like there are so many ways to get involved but honestly direct ways like contact your like local dem club if you straight up just google like state city like dem club you'll find like a website or some kind of yeah. not all the websites are and great, do it honestly. with friends like bring friends with you because you're getting more people involved and it could be a little more quote fun. fun that way i just got to knock doors with my friends all summer it was super fun we got to pet dogs we got to you know do all kinds of stuff and the worst that can happen is like you go to somebody's house and they're like no I had some people be rude to me this summer, but mostly I had really nice people, like even people who were Republicans, like they, there was this one guy who I ended up talking to like for 10 minutes because he like was Republican, he was just asking me about my like life and like why I was a Democrat and it was like fine and he like was very nice and offered yeah. um, like an umbrella when I was yeah. rating, so like you know, Cause I know, be nice. Yeah, I know a lot of it can like kind of seem overwhelming and scary and like, but the thing is, just think about how overwhelming and scary it is to be part of a group that's being affected by what's going on. You know what I'm like, saying? Like, think about, like, being an immigrant. And, like, yeah. also think about the people who literally physically don't have the, like, time to go volunteer because they're working, like, four jobs to support their family yeah. because minimum wage sucks. And what should I do to convince someone to vote? Literally everything we just said. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like, remind them that, like, that their vote does matter. Because, like I yes. said, literally two votes per precinct in, like, the state of Michigan could have made this, like, a blue state. Like, two votes. If you're in a purple state, like, your vote does matter. And, like, at this point with how bad, like, voter suppression is and stuff, we, like, states will be counting every single last ballot like that is yeah. like it is not going to be like a oh like we're not going to count this and like like your vote does matter it and like i just want you to think about all the countries where people don't have the right to vote like my grandparents live in russia and they don't have the right to vote like it's like you should be grateful that you have this opportunity yeah. to like decide the direction your country goes yeah. in and you don't want to be i've seen so many tweets and stuff of people that didn't vote and wish so badly that they had. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be that person. Like, just please. <laughs> please vote. What's the best way to help a candidate you love? Again, volunteering, really. Money yeah. is important, too, though. Like, if you can make, like, a recurring donation to your yeah. candidate every month, like, um, like, campaigns do money to keep, like, do need money yeah. to keep going. It is important. But really, like, volunteering, like, Literally just being vocal, like getting your friends yeah, to vote. Yeah, I was going to say, because I know, like, even if you are working a lot and you might not have the time to, like, physically go help and you don't necessarily have the funds to donate, that's all valid. So even just using your voice, even if you think, oh, like, people aren't going to listen or, like, I don't have, like, a platform, you're... Stick a yard sign in your front yard. Put yard signs in your yard, then other people know that there are other Democrats and they won't feel alone and people, other people will be more vocal. If our neighbor could have a Trump banner, I'm putting a fucking sign in the yard. Would you maybe add some ways for people who aren't 18 slash eligible, slash eligible to vote can get involved? Volunteering. You don't, literally, you don't have to be a certain age to volunteer. Like, obviously, if you're small, you should probably, like, have your parent permission. But, like, I met this girl this past summer who was 16 years old. She volunteered on Stacey Abrams campaign for a whole summer and like she she was one of the most incredible people i've ever met because she just straight was 16 years old and like got involved and like i would have never done that stuff when i was 16. okay
If the angle moves, it's because I ran out of storage on my SD card. This is our dog named Blue. She's a Democrat. <laughs> when do we choose a Democratic candidate and who's even left? Great question. I'm not even going to tell you who's even left because who knows? It could change literally tomorrow. You need to know are like the front runners are like Buzz with Warren, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, Tom Steyer, Mike Bloomberg, um, Amy Kombucha. Amy Kombucha. <laughs> Joe Biden. <clears throat> and so when do we choose them? Okay, so it really all comes down to voters. So first of all, we literally have like, I don't know what day of the week it is. Oh, we have like two weeks left into Iowa caucus, which I'll we don't like know what that is because I didn't understand what the fuck a caucus was until yeah. last summer. Basically, it is when people like literally go to a like physical location and they like stand in like caucus in like a specific corner for their candidate to cast their vote. I don't know. It doesn't make any actual fucking Wait, sense. I didn't, honestly, I had no idea that that's I what don't, it was. I don't know. That is what someone vaguely explains to me as I honestly, I'm too afraid to ask. I don't know. I'll fact check that. Yeah, fact check this, but this is what someone explained it to me as last summer. Anyways, those are the like, um, first states that like cast their votes um and then we have like super tuesday which is the first tuesday of march and basically the candidates will start dropping like flies as these like votes go on because they'll see if they're like winning or losing in these states um and like they're in these states are supposed to be indicative of like who the nominee will be and it's super outdated because iowa does not represent the united states but whatever so, is iowa even a real state no <laughs> it's right there with Delaware. It doesn't exist. Facts. Just um, kidding. Please vote. My Delawareans. You could literally wait um, to have a nominee as long as, like, in July. We might not have a nominee. It depends if um, we have to wait to go to a Democratic convention, which is in July. Um, which we might. With how many people are left, we might have to wait until that to have a nominee, which is actually horrible if we do. Hopefully, like, by May, people will have, like, been like oh i stand no chance i should yeah. drop out because, because it's honestly, like waiting that long is just it's bad doing more bad than, yeah because we need to have like a unified like front so basically we don't know yeah when there will be a candidate i'll left. link like a rough timeline of kind of how yeah. things go down below i saw a good one earlier today so was it like the la times yes the la times yeah. had a good one like, yeah even like with all the debate dates and yep. stuff in it it was really i feel like the debates have been happening forever i'm so lost and from there how is the vp candidate chosen um, how can we find out more about who's running slash their policies in an unbiased and easy to understand way? Okay, I think that was a separate question, but I'll get to both. Basically, a VP candidate is chosen by the presidential candidate, like, and they will kind of choose based off, like, their own personal preference, and also usually it's the person who, like, it's usually the person who is, like, kind of, like, the other front runner. Um, VP candidate can be, like, a huge thing because it can help, like, sway people. Usually they do try to pick someone whose, like, policies might be slightly different than them to just to get more votes. Um, like, no one's going to pick their candidate, though, until, like, they are the nominee. Like, like you can kind of, like, gauge who might pick who and stuff like that based yeah. off just, like, weird, like, rumors on the internet, but take all those with a grain of salt. And so the last point I think we'll probably cover is this question. And lastly, is Trump the only Republican running? Is he even running for re-election? I'm assuming him running also depends on whether the Senate removes him from office. So there's a lot to unpack here. Trump is the only Republican running because he is the incumbent, uh, which is basically, he, it means, that term means he's like the only, like he is the current president. Uh, it would look really bad for party unity if another Republican were to run. So typically there is no opposition within a party. Like typically it's just only like the, like it would be like the only Democrat, like Obama ran for re-election, no one like challenged him. Um, it would be really, really bad if someone like did that for party unity's sake. Um, so no one will do that. Like it's just not nothing um which is unfortunate because i know the republicans who hate trump but that's a don't separate issue he is running for re-election in fact the man has supposedly already started his campaign for 2024 and i know you're wondering how is that possible because we have an eight term eight year term limit oh oh there there is some loophole he's trying to work through and because he has stacked the courts in his favor he is stacking an administration in his favor and he's a corrupt person and we have a fascist dictator for a president um it is possible he could run for a re-election in 2024. I didn't um, even know that. Yeah. Yeah. 
what's his face tweeted and was like, oh, I'm so. in charge of heading up the 2024 campaign. And I was like, that's illegal. But I guess basically Trump's going to claim that Democrats halted his presidency so Oh, much. I did read that. That uh, he deserves another term because he. Didn't Anyways, um, and no, he can still run if he is removed from office by the Senate, unless they made a stipulation in the removal that prevents him from like rerunning. But that's like not a thing that's like ever happened. I'll link um, a thing about the impeachment stuff below too. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm complicated. Really so basically, the impeachment will change nothing. Um, normally, it would change something for president, but um, Donald Trump has brainwashed. A lot of Everybody. people are thinking that he has not created, like, uh, has not committed a crime. And that is just not true because he was impeached. Like, it means he committed a crime. Like, that, like, that's what impeachment means. Yeah, it doesn't mean removed from office. Like, it means he committed a crime. So, um, like, people just think that's a lie, though, because they're, like, literally people I am, like, friends with on Facebook from high school have shared, like, links being, like, oh, like, it's, like, a fake document. It's, like, Donald Trump has been impeached on the grounds of, oh, we can't win in 2020, like, sign the Democrats. Like, things like that. Like, that's just not true. He committed a crime. He is running. And that is why we have to do everything we can to get out the vote. Because at the end of the day, we have more Democrats in this country than Republicans. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 3 million votes. Fuck the Electoral College. I wanted to cover was the, um... But what if you don't fully agree with the top Democratic nominee? Oh, yeah. Think about the other option. <laughs> That's like really all I can say is just think about the other option. There are plenty of candidates who are like Democrat candidates who I don't like. Like I don't yeah. like every candidate, but if they're the nominee, you bet I will be knocking doors every day this summer to get people to vote for them. Yeah. Like I like can put aside my feelings about like whatever policies they have because like at the end of the day, any progress is progress. Like. Maybe it's not the, like, radical change we want, or maybe it's, like, barely changing the status quo, but I think there is power in having a president that can, like, actually form a literate sentence, and... Kind of cover this a little, but I want to emphasize it again. Well, voting doesn't affect me, it won't matter. Um, it does affect you. No matter how pro-bitch you are, like, politics affect you every day. Politics yeah. created the Flint water crisis. Politics... Create, like, Paul, literally, if you care about nothing else, if you don't care about other humans, it affects your taxes. Donald Trump raised taxes on everyone except for billionaires. Like, I have friends who make so much money and not that, like, not like they're billionaires or anything like that, and they pay like 40% of their, like, income in taxes. Like, and like, they, that was not the case before. Like, Donald Trump is raising taxes on the middle class. If you don't care about anything else, like, you don't care about gay rights, whatever. Maybe care about yourself and care about your money. Like, if that's what gets you to the polls, I don't know. Like, it's also terrible and you shouldn't think that way. But, like, it does affect you. Politics affect you every day. It affects your health care. It affects how much money you're paying when you go to the doctor. It affects who you can see. It affects the health care treatment you can receive. People are depriving themselves of their insulin because they cannot afford the care they need because insulin prices are insane. People are dying on the streets. There are homeless people. Like, there are so many things that politics affect every day, and that's also why you should vote in your local elections. Yes. <laughs> um, and then also, just think about your friends when you vote. Like, think about how it's going to affect the people you know, love, and care about, and even those that you don't know that's going to affect. I think it's something to really keep in mind. When I think we should goals. have empathy. Like. For some people, maybe that's possible. Maybe pull both, pull yourself up by bootstraps is a thing, but it's not for everyone because we have such a terrible minimum wage with such high inflation that it's physically impossible. There are people working three jobs, like three full-time jobs, like who don't see their kids, who literally cannot even like afford basic health care because of the state our country is in. And like, maybe you think it's like all their fault or whatever, but I'm telling you it's not. It's literally systemic problems. There's just like, there are so many so many things that like politics and fix and if you're a person who lives in michigan and wants to complain about the fucking roads then maybe fucking pay your taxes that's all i have to fucking say there's also issues yes with where your tax money goes to trust me we all are on the same page about that but um at the end of the day like you can't say i hate taxes and also complain about why the road in your neighborhood is broken then fix it your damn self and don't pay the taxes and that's on that. If you guys have any other questions, you can leave them down below or you can tweet me or Nat.
Yeah, um, you can, like, DM me anytime. Yeah, I'll leave I, all of that socials below. And, like, straight up, like I said, no question is too basic because, like, people are uninformed. Like, our, just, like, our education system doesn't do a good job of informing people yeah. about voting. Like, they're, like, I... Yeah, like no question is yeah. too dumb. Like, I will do happily not answer. Feel like, bad. like if you want to ask me about like the details of Medicare for all, I will happily like help you out. I hope this was helpful, Nat. Thank you for being my political queen. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please, 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 please <laughs> talk with my hands with Nat's hand. <laughs> please be educated. <laughs> Do your research, get involved as you can. Um, everything, so I will link a bunch the of stuff down below. The world is ending and climate change is real. I love you guys with my whole heart and we will see you at the polls. Bye! Bye!